Today's Namaste Yoga is a beginner yoga class on intention. Hi, I'm Dr. Melissa West and welcome to Namaste Yoga. Thank you so much for joining us. This class is, is intended for beginners as well as for our more experienced and loyal practitioners of Namaste Yoga. Um, it's a really great practice to come back to beginner classes with a fresh mind as though you are doing it for the first time. This is something that we call beginner's mind and it can be a very advanced practice. So I encourage you to do this practice as well if you have been practicing Namaste Yoga for with us for the past five years. It's a great practice to do as well. In this class, what we are going to be doing is looking at the intention behind everything that we do in Namaste Yoga. Not only are we going to explore the reason why behind what we do on Namaste Yoga, but we are also going to look at intention itself because it's a really important concept in yoga. I forgot to say, this is episode number 250 of Namaste Yoga. We are at Government House. It's the end of October in 2014 here in Victoria, BC. We had a big windstorm last night, so you may see a really uh, great sweet gardener going back and forth on his little tractor as he picks up the debris that came down and you can hear it coming now so we wanted to let you know that so we don't have to cut a zillion times <laughs> through our film shoot today we like to keep it real here and uh, keep the flow going so that's what we're all about here so thank you to Dusky Leaf for our props. Today you are going to need yoga blocks and a yoga strap. So uh, for those of you who are new to yoga, you probably don't have any props yet. So that's fine. You can use a, the strap from your bathrobe. And for blocks, you could use um, cans from your kitchen, soup cans or uh, like um, almond milk boxes. That kind of thing would work. Anything that's kind of about that height would be fine just improvise use what you have and also thanks to squeeze yoga clothing for my clothes today I'm wearing long gray yoga plant pants and it's got an ohm symbol on the pants and then underneath my warm jacket I'm wearing the brand new um, bamboo long sleeves shirt with love on it and I'm wearing the new headband as well today too to keep my hair off my face so I also have a testimonial from Megan on YouTube, and this is from about a year ago from Namaste Yoga 101. I went back because we hear a lot from beginners. You might wonder why we're doing beginners classes. Well, on average on my YouTube channel, a class over time gets about, an average class over time for us gets around 3,000 views around that, on, just on my channel. Beginners classes can get around 300,000 views, so some of them. So uh, this is why we do beginners classes. They, they are very popular. People uh, really like them. So here's uh, from Megan. She says, you are fantastic. I've always wanted to try yoga, but usually get overwhelmed with, quote, beginner yoga. I made it completely through episode 101, and it was enough to show me that yoga is definitely for me. So it's great to see people who might not normally try a class come to yoga and maybe even catch the yoga bug and come along and try other classes afterwards. Because if you can do a beginner class, you can probably do pretty much any Namaste yoga class. So let's get started. We usually start lying down on your back. So let me show you how to do that. You're going to lie down on your back and start with your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor 
And just take a moment to tuck your shoulder blades underneath you so that your shoulder blades are cupping your heart. That opens up your chest a little bit more. And then press into your feet and tuck your tailbone under. And then you can either leave your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor, or you can lengthen your legs out long. You can stay here with your legs long if your low back isn't bothering you, or you can come back to your knees bent with your feet flat on the floor if that's more comfortable for your low back. So choose whatever position works best for you today. And you're going to stay here for a short guided relaxation while I come back up to seated to guide you through it. So go ahead and take a deep breath in through your nose and let it fall out of your mouth. So we start here lying on your back for a few reasons. To release tension from your body, to transition from the busyness of your day-to-day -day life with all its external demands, to the quieter pace of yoga where you will turn inward. So it's a shift from the multitasking world of your day-to-day -day life to the focus on one thing at a time. So the first thing I want you to focus on is your breath. Without needing to fix or change it in any way, just notice what's happening with your breath right now as you breathe in and out through your nose. Just be curious about your breath. And then take a deep breath in through your nose. And let it fall out of your mouth. And now shift your awareness to your physical body. Notice what's happening in your physical body. what stands out, what seems most important. And then take a deep breath in through your nose. And let it fall out of your mouth. And bring your attention to the ground beneath you. Feel all the parts of your body that are connecting to the ground underneath you. And each time you breathe out, allow yourself to sink and drop a little bit more into the ground, allowing gravity to pull you towards the center of the earth, releasing the tension from your body, just letting go to the natural pull of gravity towards the center of the earth, nothing to do, just releasing to what already is there.
And then take a deep breath in through your nose and let it fall out of your mouth. And you're going to begin to wiggle and stretch out a little bit, but stay lying on your back. And if you have your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor, keep your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor. If not, go ahead and bend your knees and place your feet flat on the floor now. You're going to take your left ankle over the top of your right thigh and open your left knee out to the side. Then you're going to draw your right knee in towards your chest. Reach your left arm through the space that your left leg is making and hold on behind your right knee, drawing your right knee in towards your chest until you feel something happening on the outside of your left leg and into your left buttocks. So this is keyhole stretch or figure four stretch. And this stretch is going to prepare you for sitting in a few moments. And it's also going to prepare you for one of our standing poses today. Let your shoulders be heavy on the ground. Relax your belly and breathe into your belly. Breathing in and out through your nose. And then release your right leg down, uncross your left leg, and just take a moment here, take a deep breath in through your nose, let it fall out of your mouth, and take a moment to sense the difference in the sensations in your body between the left and your right side now. And then you're going to go ahead and cross your right ankle over the top of your left thigh, Open your right knee out to the side and then draw your left leg in towards your torso. Reach your right hand through the space that you're being, making with your right leg. Hold on behind your left leg and just draw your left leg in until you feel something happening on the outside of your left, at your right leg and into your right buttocks. So again, this figure four stretch is going to be preparing your hips for being able to sit and for one of the standing postures that we're going to be doing you can feel that it's stretching out your hips and your outer thighs let your shoulders be heavy here continue to breathe let your belly be soft and breathe into your belly. Long, slow, deep breaths. Keep your left 
leg fully bent. Sometimes I notice people extend that left leg up, but it should be fully bent. And then release your left leg down, uncross the top of your right leg. Take a moment here, breathe in through your nose. Let it fall out of your mouth. And just feel the sensations on the backs of your buttocks and just notice if that feels a little bit more even now. And then we're going to get your strap. So, you're going to pick up your strap. I think that's raindrops on my strap. Is it raining a little? No? Okay, good. Um, you're going to place your strap around the ball of your right foot. So, you don't want to place it in the arch because that can damage the arch of your foot. But right below your toes, where all the, the ball of your foot is, okay? And you can do this with whatever kind of strap you're using. And we're going to start with your left knee bent and your right leg straight. You're gonna draw your right leg in. And your strap is nice and long so you don't have to reach and grasp. You can let your shoulders be heavy. And draw your toes towards your face. You wanna feel a stretch in the back of your leg on your hamstrings. This is a stretch for your hamstrings. Generally, when people start yoga, their hamstrings are really, really tight. This is a great way to stretch them out. And also check in with your knuckles. Make sure you, you just have soft knuckles, not white knuckles here. And relax your belly. Breathe into your belly. Okay, now slide your left leg out long so that you have your left side of your body heavy on the ground. And then you're gonna open your right leg out to the side. So you wanna feel the stretch on the inside of your right thigh, not on the inside of your knee joint. Just open it up until you feel that stretch on the inside of your thigh and keep drawing it up towards your face. So this again is going to prepare us for one of our standing postures that we're going to be doing today. Keep heavy on the left side of your body. Let it sink into the ground. Let your belly be soft and breathe into your belly.
and then scoop out your belly, draw your leg back to the center and lower it down and just take a moment here to feel the difference between your right and your left side of your body. And then unhook your right foot. I'm, I feel like I'm on a steep hill and I'm gonna like roll all the way down here. <laughs> it's probably hardly an angle. You guys probably can't even see it. You're going to bend your right knee now and then hook up your left foot and again put that strap right on the ball of your foot and you're going to extend your left leg straight up and draw it in into and stop when you feel a stretch on the back of your leg. So you want to feel a stretch in your hamstring, maybe all the way up the back of your leg. We'll do this with your right leg bent. Feel your right foot on the ground. Feel the top of your leg bone here and the sinking into the ground. Let your shoulders be heavy. Soften your grip. Relax your belly. And breathe right into your pelvic bowl. And then to create some weight on the right side of your body, slide your right leg out. And you can even take your right arm out to the side. Open your left leg out until you feel a stretch on your left inner thigh. You don't want to feel it in your joint, so stop before you feel it in your joint. You just go until you feel a stretch in your left inner thigh. And it could be different on this side, so honor those differences. And breathe here. And then take your leg back to the center and slowly lower it down in front. And just take a moment here to feel the effects of this practice. And then you can take your strap and put it off to the side. Bend your knees and roll to the right side and come up onto all fours. And from all fours, we're going to do cat pose. So for cat pose, you'll place your hands underneath your shoulders and your knees underneath your hips. And you're going to exhale, round up through your back and inhale and arch through your back. Breathe out round. 
breathe in an arch. So the intention behind this pose is that you are moving your spine in flexion and extension. That is you're rounding and arching your spine. And we're going to actually move your spine in all of its directions here. And then walk your hands over to the left and continue that moment, movement. So you are side bending here and then moving your spine through flexion and extension. Breathe out round, breathe in an arch, and then walk your hands over to the right side of your mat. Keep drawing your left hip back. Breathe out round, breathe in an arch. And then come back to the center and inhale, open your left arm up to the side. So I'm going to show you this with my right arm because I'm, I have a shoulder injury right now and <laughs> I have very limited range of motion in my left side right now. So it's going to look like this. Inhale, open up. And then you're going to take your left shoulder down to the ground and tuck your left chin in and rotate here so that we're getting spinal rotation too. So your chin is tucked, your left shoulder is on the ground. Your left arm is reaching through the space between your right wrist and your right knee. And then you're going to inhale and come up. And we're going to do this on the other side. So you'll inhale, open your right side up, open your chest. Exhale, take your right shoulder to the ground. You're reaching your right hand between your left wrist, your left knee. Lower your right shoulder to the ground. And tuck your chin so the back of your neck is long. And breathing here. And then inhale, you're going to come up. And now that we've moved your spine in all of its directions and stretch out your hips and the backs of your legs, you're going to come to a comfortable seated position. So that could be sitting cross-legged on a meditation cushion or a folded blanket. You could sit in a chair or you could kneel on a block, whatever is most comfortable for you. And we come to seated. The purpose of bringing you to seated is to receive the teachings and to set your intention after doing some yoga. So you've had time to get out of your mind, out of your head and release some of the tension from your body and mind. And so therefore you're more receptive to the teachings now than you would have been at the beginning of the class. Number two, you're in a seated position, so that makes you more alert and able to receive the teachings and to be able to set an intention. So, um, we are going to do the seated position with the um, Vajra Mudra. So you're going to interlace your fingers with your index finger extended and the sides of your thumbs are together for that one. So you're going to take this mudra and you're gonna place it at the level of your heart. Sink down through your sit bones, lengthen up through your spine, draw your ears back over your shoulders and close your eyes. And you'll sit in this meditation position and receive the teachings on intention for today. 
So just breathe long, slow, and deep into your belly while you listen. So today we are learning all about intention, sankalp. Michael Lee from Phoenix Rising Yoga Therapy says intention means in, which means in, ten means to hold, and shan, which means that which. That's the, the Latin uh, origin of the word. So in other word, that which we hold within us. Michael Lee says, what we hold within us has a good chance of becoming our reality because we are holding it at a subconscious level. I love this definition of intention because it lets go of doing and opens us to being. That which we hold within us allows us to remember and connect to a way of being. Intention is an inward journey to our deepest aspiration and truest longing. With intention we ask ourselves, why am I practicing yoga today? Why am I here? Why did I roll out this yoga mat and show up? What did I hope to receive by doing this? Intentions are supposed to be stated in the positive present tense as though they have already happened. For example, if you want to be more flexible, you might state the intention, I am flexible. As yogis, we can then explore how to fully embody that intention. The intention to be more flexible in your body can be expanded to all levels of your being. How could you be more mentally flexible? You might open yourself up to another point of view. If you are exploring one solution to a problem and finding that isn't working, are you able to shift course and have the mental flexibility to explore another possibility? What about emotional flexibility? Do you allow yourself to express a full range of emotions from sadness to anger to frustration to boredom to anxiety to contentness to joy? And then there is spiritual flexibility. Are you rigid in your beliefs or are you open to different spiritual points of view? Another common sankalp that a beginner might come to a yoga practice with is, I want to lose weight. So notice that that isn't it stated in the affirmative or in the present moment as though it has already happened. So let's reframe this. One of the ways to start thinking about this is, can you imagine your life when you have reached your goal weight? How will you be? What will your life be like? How will you be in your relationships? What will a day be like? So you might reframe, I want to lose weight into a positive present, state, present tense statement like I am healthy, strong, and vibrant. So there you go. That's a good intention statement. So with intention, there is usually some tension between where you are now and returning to your true nature. Earlier this week in my yoga class, my teacher said we are simply remembering our true nature. We have become dismembered in our day-to-day -day lives. In order to be healthy, strong, and vibrant, you may have to take a journey inwards to explore the disconnect between where you are now and where you want to be. Are you willing to be loving and kind towards yourself and explore what you choose to put in your mouth, that it may be an act of loving kindness? Or is it time to be honest that some of the foods you choose to eat can also be an act of violence to your body? So. As I look at some of these questions, I'm going to explore some of the yams and niyams of yoga. It is about being honest with your thoughts, words, and actions, the way you think about your body, the things you say to yourself, and the actions you take in your life. Yoga asks you to be moderate in your lifestyle and to practice non-hoarding. Is your diet free from mental and physical toxins? Are you open to practice the discipline that it is necessary to truly get to know yourself and what supports you in being healthy, strong, and vibrant? 
Setting your t intention is simply tuning into what you most want to receive from your practice today. When you reflect on your body, your breath, and your life circumstances, what stands out most about those experiences? If you have a pain in your shoulder, your breath feels up high in your chest, and you're experiencing a lot of stress in your job, then maybe your intention is to let go of some of the burdens you're experiencing in your life through your yoga mat, on your yoga mat. Whatever is unique to you in your experience is the right intention for you. There is no right or wrong, no better best. So this is your yoga practice. So let's take some time right now to set your intention. As you continue to hold this mudra, take a moment to sense into your body. So tune into your physical body. Notice what's standing out about your physical experience right now. And then take a deep breath in and let it fall out of your mouth and notice your breath. Breathe in and out through your nose. Your breath can be such a great barometer for your being. So what is your breath telling you about how you are right now? And then take a deep breath in through your nose and let it fall out of your mouth. And reflect on your life circumstances. What's going on in your life right now? Then bring all of that together, your, what's happening in your body, what your breath was telling you about your experience right now, what's happening in your life. And from all of that, what would you like to receive from your yoga practice today? What is it that you're trying to create, sustain, release, or rebirth in your life right now? And how could this practice best help you to do that? And then once you've formed your intention, you can begin to release this mudra. And we're going to do lunge pose to stretch out the fronts of your hips. So you can get your blocks for this because you're going to need your blocks, not necessarily for your lunge pose, but for the pose that comes after it. So you are going to take your blocks on either side of your hand and place your left foot between your blocks and lean forward. Your left knee should be over your left ankle and you want to feel a stretch in the front of your right hip.
So the intention behind this pose is to stretch out the front of your right hip. And then you're going to bring your back knee in quite a bit. Curl your right toes under. Turn your blocks up so that they're higher. And straighten out both legs. And, and the intention behind this pose is to stretch out the back of your left leg. So more of a hamstring stretch for your front leg. Okay, from here you're going to turn your right toes out and you're going to drop your left sit bone, roll your right hip open. And keep your left hand on your block and reach your right arm up. You might even want to uh, bring that left block in and open up. So this is triangle pose and I chose this pose because I thought it was such a great pose for intention. And um, because it feels like everything in this pose knows where it's going. <laughs> the legs are reaching down into the ground. Your hips are rolling open. Your arms are reaching up. Your chest is reaching up. And your eyes are looking up if it doesn't hurt your neck. And then slowly let this pose out of your body. And we'll go ahead and do this on the other side. So this time you're going to step your right foot through. And you're going to lean forward until you feel a stretch in the front of your left hip. Your right knee is over your right ankle. So lunge pose, and again, the intention behind this one is to stretch at the front of your left hip. And then you're going to bring your back knee in quite a bit. Lift your block straight up. Curl your back toes under and straighten out both legs. So here the intention is to stretch out your hamstrings in your front leg.
And then you're gonna turn your right toes out, drop your left sit bone, open up your left hip. And you can either leave your hand on the block behind your foot or you can bring it to your, bring your block underneath your right shoulder. And then you're going to lift your left arm straight up. So, cause I've got this shoulder injury my left arm doesn't go up so I'm just going to modify it the best that I can like you should modify where you need to and turn my head up and just leave my hand by the side of my body but you you're going to um, you're going to think about the intention behind this pose so all about straight lines it's like a mathematical pose triangle you reach your legs down into the ground you roll your hips open you open your chest it's a straight line between your right arm and your left arm going straight up And then you're going to slowly release and lower back down. And from here, we're going to do our inversion. So for our inversion, we're going to do rabbit pose. And the reason why I chose rabbit pose is because your head goes below your heart in this one. That's very significant of your ego dropping below your heart. So our head below our heart represents the humility of our ego. Our intention should be for the benefit of all beings. And when we set our intention, when we go about our actions in the world, the Bhagavad Gita, one of the main texts of yoga, says that we need to release the fruits of our actions so we can, we can have our actions in the world. Um, they can be for the benefit of our all beings. But um, So for example, when I create this yoga class, I can... Uh, created for the benefit of all beings, but then once I create it, I need to let it go and not worry about whether people like it or hate it, or um, I need to let it go and just let it go into the world. So here's what we're going to do. You're going to take your hands underneath your shoulders, and if you have any neck injuries, um, you want to just exercise caution with this. You might want to sit this one out. You're just going to place the top of your head on the ground. Then you're going to interlace your fingers behind your back and you're going to lift your arms up overhead. So um, again, because I have this shoulder injury, my left shoulder doesn't lift. So probably your rabbit arms can lift up a fair amount, but mine won't lift. So um, see how much your rabbit ears want to lift here. But the most important part of the pose is that your head goes below your heart here. This is also called poor man's headstand. And then take your hands on either side of your head and press up. And then we're going to just stretch out the back of your neck. So drop your chin to your chest and lengthen out the back of your neck. And 
and uh, come down onto your belly. So lying on your belly, you're going to place your hands underneath your shoulders. Tuck your right toe under, lengthen out through the front of your right hip. Tuck your left toe under, lengthen out through the front of your left hip. Press the front of your pelvis into the ground, draw your elbows in close to the sides of your body. And then you're going to lift the front of your chest up off the ground so that you're coming into Cobra Pose, Bhujangasan. And I chose this pose because sometimes your intention will ask you to open to new ways of being. And then you're going to slowly lower down and push yourself up and back, draw your knees up underneath you. And you can either have your arms out long in front of you or your hands down by the side of your body. Now, if this position doesn't work for your knees, you can always lie on your back and hug your knees into your chest instead. Now, I chose this pose because with intention, at first your intention is a small seed. And your seed usually has to grow down into the ground first before you see any results from the growth of your intention above ground. So if you think of a carrot, sometimes a carrot is going to grow really deep, a big carrot down under the earth. And more might be happening under the earth than appears to be happening above the earth. So sometimes growing into the depths, a lot is happening. Even though you might not have a lot to show for it above the ground. Okay, so slowly come up from your child's pose, Balasan, and sit with your legs straight out in front of you. I'm just going to put my socks back on and keep my feeties warm. <laughs> you are going to sit with your legs straight out in front of you. And lengthen up tall through your spine. Slide your left leg in so your whole left foot is flat on the ground. And wrap your right arm around your right leg and place your left hand at the base of your spine. And lengthen up through your spine for a twist. So twists, we do twists because they help to remove toxins from our body. And sometimes when you set an intention, you need to let go of old toxic beliefs about yourself. So um, one of the toxic beliefs that I've had to let go about myself is that I'm not a writer. So for example, there was this book that I wanted to buy, I still want to buy it. <laughs> I haven't bought it for myself yet. I saw it at Monroe's bookstore in Victoria. 
It's by um, Mary Oliver, one of my favorite poets. It's on. It's a poetry writing handbook, and I saw it weeks and weeks and weeks ago, and I, I was like, oh, a book on how to write poetry. And as soon as I saw it, I thought, but I'm not a writer, and I'm certainly not a writer of poetry. That's ridiculous. You shouldn't buy that book. So that was... <laughs> I know, my husband's sitting behind the <laughs> camera saying, but you're a published writer, but see, there's the toxic beliefs system uh, that I'm not a writer, even though I'm a writer. I've published, I have a, yes, I'm a published author, actually. <laughs> How much more of a writer I need to be, I know, right. See, so there are, are uh, toxic beliefs that, uh, often we need to let go of when we uh, set intentions. Twists can be good for that. I know, okay, it's ridiculous. So let's, um, why don't you <laughs> bring to mind uh, whatever belief you have about yourself that you want to release on this other side. We're gonna twist it out here. Let, let go of all those ridiculous toxic beliefs you have about yourself. So inhale here. Exhale, rotate. Let go of whatever silly toxic belief you have about yourself. See, and it's good if you run those toxic beliefs by somebody who knows you really well because they'll just point out how insanely stupid they are too. Because I'd actually forgotten I was a published author. Yeah, I really had. <laughs> I know. I write a lot. I don't know how much more of a writer I could be. You know, on the membership site, I have almost a thousand posts now beside my name. Uh, yeah. I've written a few things. Oh, Tim's telling me now I have over 1,200 blog posts on my website now, too. They, they might count. <laughs> So now I'm imprinting some new beliefs. I hope you're doing the same. <laughs> okay, come back to the center. We're going to do uh, a forward fold now so um, we can let go into our intention. So it helps to be elevated a little bit to roll forward into your forward fold so bend your left leg lengthen long roll your pelvis over your leg leg bone your right leg is straight your left leg is bent and this is Janu Shirshasan and this is forward folds are about surrendering and you're going to surrender and let go into your intention so when I was thinking about intention this week, and I was writing a lot about it this week, <laughs> I was really, when I was writing, I was reflecting on how I thought that intention should really let go of striving, because it's all about uncovering your innate way of being. It's just already who, who you already are. <laughs> so. As Tim has helped me see this morning, clearly I am already a writer. I don't actually have to work to become a writer any more than I already am because I have written a lot. It's about surrendering to my natural way of being. So what have you realized that you are simply surrendering into that you no longer have to strive for because you already are you can let me know in the comments. And then come on up here. 
extend through your left leg, bend your right leg long. Inhale, lengthen up tall through your spine. You're going to roll your pelvis over your leg bone. Keep your spine long. You reach your navel towards your knee, your heart towards your shin. And feel the stretch on the back of your leg. Keep your heel in the center of the ground here. Just keep your foot relaxed. And then roll back up to seated. And from here, you're going to rest back into corpse pose, Shavasana. And this is to integrate and receive your practice. So just slowly roll back and lie down onto your back. And just like you did at the beginning of the class, tuck your shoulder blades underneath you so that your upper back is settled. Bend your knees, place your feet flat on the floor. Tuck your tailbone underneath you and then you can either leave your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor or if your low back is comfortable, you can lengthen your legs out long. And you can stay here and rest to integrate, to allow your practice to drop into your body and I'm going to come up and read you a poem. Okay, so our poem today is by a local Victoria writer. She hasn't been living in Victoria for very long. She just moved here from Ontario in the spring. Her name is Melissa West. <laughs> this is not her first poem. <laughs> The teachers in her Mentor with Melissa course have heard a few of her other poems already. <laughs> but yeah, this is her first public reading. <laughs> Actually, not her first public reading because the, uh, the teachers have heard a few of her poems, but this is her first widely public read <laughs> uh, poem. So this is a poem called Climb into the Tent of Intention, and I wrote it for today's class. I want to go camping and leave behind the culture of expectation with its supermodels, SUVs, and model homes. Dust off the urgencies and distractions of the dramas of my life and pack up my tent. Take me to the forest where trees are trees and rivers are rivers. The tree does not worry about the last time she called her mother, nor the river about financial flow. In the forest I breathe, and the tension between doing and being drops away, and the consciousness of my belly comes alive. Climb into the tent of intention, and zip up the zipper of aspiration.
Okay, so from Shavasana, you're going to gradually allow your breath to deepen. Wiggle your fingers and toes. And then to come out, you bend your knees and roll to your right side and pause there for a moment. Because here you're in the fetal position and each time you come out of Shavasana, there's a rebirth. So you're not coming out of the class the same way you came in. And then slowly make your way up to seated. And then we finish each class at Namaste Yoga in the same way. And I have just totally got myself. There we go. So we finish with a mantra. Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu. And that means may all beings be happy and free. And may the thoughts, words, and actions of my own life contribute to the happiness and freedom for all. And what we do is we take all the benefits of our own practice and offer it out to others. So we have a moving mudra series that we do with this. So you start with your left palm facing up and your right palm facing down. And you hook your right one under your left one. And you interlace your last three fingers. And then your... Uh, your index fingers and your thumbs come together and you bring your index fingers in your to your forehead and then you take the jana mudra and you turn it out kind of like a, a bird and we chant the mantra again and then you finish with your baby fingers together and you chant the mantra one more time so we will just do this and you'll catch on in a few classes. <laughs> Loka samasta suki no bhavantu Loka samasta suki no bhavantu Loka samasta suki no bhavantu. So thank you for joining us for episode 250 of Namaste Yoga. If you liked today's class, give it a thumbs up. If you think there's somebody else in your life who would like this class, then go ahead and share it with them. If you'd like more free videos, then subscribe to our channel. For previous episodes, click here. And if you'd like way more value-added content, we'd love to have you as a member on our membership site. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about some of the videos that we have on Sankalp or Intention if you'd like to take this practice further. So we have a five-class series on our membership site on Sankalp and Intention. The first class is a meditation to set your intention for your yoga practice. The second class is a meditation to set your intention for the day. And I know a lot of people have done that for a number of days and said that it's really focused their day. The third one is a survey, like a, a kind of a survey where you can figure out your top values and strengths. The fourth one is a class uh, where you figure out your harm your life purpose and your inner essence as a way to set your a longer term intention for your life and then the fifth class is a lecture that answers a lot of questions that you many of the members had about uh, setting long-term intentions and uh, sunk help. Then we also have another series on intention on our membership site, which was another lecture. And then it has a yoga nidra, which is sleep yoga. Oftentimes intention is set for uh, where it's supposed to come to you. So if you're in a very relaxed state, a sleep yogic state, your intention will come to you. So there's yoga nidra, and then it's followed up with another meditation where you can check in on the, the, the intention that came to you in that yoga nidra. So those are some of the value-added content things that we have on our membership site to take this practice of intention further for you. 
So we'd love to have you on our membership site. That's where we house our value-added content. We have members from all over the world that create a really great supportive community. And that's where I give you extra support for your personal practice. So thank you so much for joining us for our practice today. I'm sending you much love from beautiful British Columbia. May you experience the strength of our mountains. May you be as rooted as the trees in our forest and may your joy be as deep as our oceans. Namaste. Melissa would love to hear your questions and thoughts. Please leave your comments below the video. Thank you for your reviews on iTunes and YouTube. Your reviews help us to share yoga and a yoga lifestyle with others around the world. If you have a question for Melissa, you can leave a voice message at melissawest.com, and Melissa may answer it in an upcoming blog.